Hey guys, welcome to this week's Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Shalini Joshi Amdagni, and I am an international physical and emotional pain relief expert based here in Bangkok. And uh, so I am doing weekly Facebook Lives uh, every Thursday, and this is um, another episode of the Thursday Live shows that I do. And our topic today is your story is keeping you stuck and five tips uh, to help you get unstuck okay so that's the topic for today hi aldrin thank you for joining uh welcome all of you who are joining me live um hello shweta and to all of those that will be watching this on replay, which is most people, uh, thank you for joining. And our topic today is your story is keeping you stuck. And I'm sharing with you five tips to help you get unstuck from your specific situation uh, by sharing tips and tools. So, uh, you know, a lot of the times we let our past define us and what's possible for us and what's not possible for us. And uh, without even realizing that we are doing it. And that's why, um, you know, I've been having these conversations recently in my own head about how I'm keeping myself stuck by the stories that I've created in my head and conversations with my kids. They are on their summer vacations and they're you know, getting ready to apply to different universities and all the stories uh, that they're creating in their heads that is kind of defining what is possible for them and not. Uh, of course, I have clients and so conversations with clients have also inspired me to create this specific uh, topic for our discussion today. So how do you know if you are keeping you know, yourself stuck because of the story that you are telling yourself? How do you figure that out? And how do you even get past it, right? So that's what we are looking at today. And to, to, to get into that, I'm sharing with you, where is it here? Um, first, I'm gonna like share with you um, a nursery rhyme <laughs> that, uh, as I was thinking about doing this, a nursery rhyme popped up uh, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to use this as a story today uh, to talk about two different mindsets that we, we can get, uh, you know, uh, stuck with and why we keep swimming in our stories. I'm remembering, uh, what was that movie with the fish? Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> And why we just keep swimming in our stories without even realizing that that's just going on and on swimming in those stories is keeping us stuck. We're going to look at, uh, we're going to look at, I'm fumbling with my words, your truth versus the absolute truth. Okay. I believe there's a big difference. So what is your truth and what is the absolute truth? And then we're going to look at five steps uh, they're not the absolute uh, steps but there are five steps that i believe can help you move past that stuck phase uh, and move towards whatever it is that you want to create for yourself whatever it is that you want okay so let's go to the nursery rhyme and i don't know if you have uh sung this but i grew up in a boarding school uh, it was called all saints and all my friends who watch this i know some of you do uh it's a little uh, hill town uh you know town a uh, hill hill town town <laughs> on uh, in in india in the north at the himalayas at the base of the himalayas and um so we, I grew up in a boarding school and every day we were singing hymns and we were singing nursery rhymes. I went there when I was six and a half years old. Uh, and so this was one of the songs that we sang in our music class. And I hope all my friends will remember this. There's a hole in my bucket, right? 
I know lots of people have heard this. There's a hole in my bucket, dear Henry, or oh, whatever. The Henry is singing it to Liza. Uh, and she's, you know, and the story is basically Henry is telling Liza, there's a hole in my bucket. There's a hole in my bucket. So Liza is telling Henry, then fix it. Go fix it. And then Henry's saying, you know, with what shall I fix it? And Liza is saying, well, use a straw to fix it. And then Henry is saying, but the straw is too long. And Liza is saying, well, then cut it, dear Henry. And uh, Henry is saying, with what shall I cut it? <laughs> Liza is saying, cut it with an ax. And uh, then Henry is telling Liza, well, the ax is too dull. And Liza is saying, well, sharpen it. And then he's saying, with what shall I sharpen it? It goes on and on until he comes back to this whole problem of there's a hole in my bucket. And I thought this is such a cute, uh, you know, I, I went when we sang it, like it was just a story and I thought it was really cute and, and all of that. And I didn't understand any, uh, you know, deeper uh, thing that there might be to it. And I'm sure the actual context, I. You know, I was looking it up and it's, it was kind of like, a, it was, I think by the Germans, uh, this thing was, the song was created and there was like a deadlock situation between Germans and another country. I, I, I don't know, you can Google the de details of why they even created such a song. But I thought it's such an interesting perspective, right? Uh, about, like we all have holes in our bucket right we have whether it's in the area of health or it's in the area of wealth or it's in the area of relationships or fitness or weight or body image or whatever right there's so many different areas and we not we don't have a full bucket right there are leaks there are there, there are, our buckets are also leaking but you know where where is what is our perspective about our holes our leaky uh, areas is it like this is the problem and now what should i do but then this is the other problem and you know how we get sucked into just looking for the problems and there is liza looking for the solutions all the time so you know i want to throw this question to you like where is uh, the hole in your bucket right now in which area uh, of your life whether it's health or money or friendships or relationships or bosses or you know even unimportant uh, things like you know you have uh, you've created this story about this is the problem so what is uh, what in your life is the hole in the bucket and what is your mindset about that hole in the bucket? Are you constantly looking for the problems, right? Or are you constantly looking for, what can I do now? Okay, okay, here's the situation, what can I do now? And, you know, why, why do we get stuck in, 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 this, in this situation? Is because, like what really leads to this is because we have an experience right we just innocently we have an experience and now if the experience was not good right then we create a story about that experience and our beliefs are uh you know uh enveloped in that little experience story um and since we have that story now and that belief in it, we go out and innocently we have another experience like that, right? And then it adds to the same story with more, you know, solidified beliefs in there. And so what happens uh, when we have a story? When we have a story, we have emotions around it, okay? So we can feel happy, positive, you know, if, 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 if it's a great story, but if it's not a good story and if it has negative experiences, then we have negative emotions about it. We have fear, we have doubt, we have judgments, we have um, anger, right? And emotions are the 
they are the predispositions uh, that lead us to taking action. Okay, so our actions are based on those emotions which come from our stories, which come from an experience. And now we take actions or don't take actions based on what's going on, right? So th that's, uh, and so if, 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 if it was a positive experience, we have, we've garnered a lot of positive experiences and we have a great feeling about it and we go out and do the action and, and it's wonderful feedback and we come back and uh, you know, we don't have to worry about it. We're having a great time. But when we have the negative experience and the negative story and the negative beliefs and the negative emotions and the negative actions, you know, not negative actions, but actions that are based on fear and you know, just this, this dis-ease within, then we create more of that, right? So uh, what the, the, <clears throat> going back to why, why we swim in our stories, right? Why do we swim in our stories? Why do we keep telling that story, uh, you know, over and over and over again? I wrote it somewhere just so that I don't forget everything yeah so here's the thing right so we have an experience and we have repeated experiences and then it's like it's become our truth it's become our reality and it's become fixed not flexible this is how it is this is how it always happens and so this is my truth i know it don't tell me otherwise this has always been my experience and so we become fixated, right, in our truths. It's like it becomes our absolute truth. And we move forward with that. And so even though that truth is painful, okay, even though that truth that we have, you know, we've, uh, we've got addicted to, because we've had so many experience it's our it's our absolute truth we have garnered all this evidence uh, to say hey this is my truth this is my story i'm not making this up i'm not making a lot of clients uh, will say that i'm not making this up shalini you know this is exactly what happened whether it's in a relationship whether the husband did this or that or whether it's a physical illness and that is you know we're not making it up but it's become our china wall of truth Right. And, and it's and it's hardcore and there's evidence. And so we keep swimming in there, even though the situation or the, the experience is painful, because number one, we get familiar with the pain. Right. That's why a lot of people in abusive relationships stay there because they've made up some stories about you know, whatever they're going through and they stay in that painful place. I have clients who will stay stuck, uh, you know, who, uh, not clients, potential people that I've spoken to who stay stuck in their pain because of some story they've been telling uh, themselves. And I'm going to share that in a bit. But so we, we keep swimming in the story. And one underlying reason why we keep staying stuck in, uh, you know, in painful uh, situation is that it gives us an excuse to escape the responsibility of creating the life that we can. So it becomes an excuse. Oh, you know, I'm not going to do this and I can't do this and that because this, 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 this. See, there is so much truth here. There is so much, you know, this is a fact and I know it. And so the familiar pain of being there is okay but the pain of taking the responsibility doing the hard work to get out of it uh, you know doing what it takes to you know get out of that comfort zone and 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 try something different you know it's it's unfamiliar man that you know i might be required to do a lot more work it's going to be hard it's going to take responsibility and so to escape that responsibility we stay in that familiar pool and we keep swimming in that same pool, you know, not allowing us to, to, to jump out of there and like 
recognize that there's endless possibilities, like there's so much possible, right? And that's why we just stay stuck in the same story, in the same pool, in the same experiences. And unfortunately, whatever we resist, whatever we hold on to only grows. And so we keep garnering more and more and more and more and more uh, experiences and stay stuck. So I want to, uh, you know, uh, just take this time to ask you, like, as I'm going through this, maybe some thoughts are coming up for you. Maybe some situations are coming for you, up for you in, in, in the area of health, in the area of uh, money, in the area of relationships. And, you know, I, I just want you, ha you to have a think about what, where am I in pain? And, you know, what is, am I uh, going on swimming in the same pool? That's something to think about, right? Because you, most of us don't realize that we're doing that to ourselves because it's our truth. So moving on, um, your truth versus the absolute truth. So let me, you know, throw you a bunch of stories. I, I just wrote some uh, experiences. So recently with my kids, right? Um, they are looking at different universities to go to. It's their last, my son's last year of college, my daughter's second last year uh, of school and you know, stepping into college and looking at the different universities. It's an overwhelming uh, you know, process for sure. And we're looking at uh, computer science and uh, biotechnology and I, I don't know, my son's gonna be happy me sharing all this. But you know, one of the things that that came up is that, oh, you know, um, I can't do computer science because my math skills aren't so strong, okay? So are we letting our past define what's possible for us today? <laughs> yes, many of us do, right? So I can't do this because in the past, my math st skills haven't been strong. Or I can't do this because I don't have this. Okay, I had a client, you know, who, who ha was having a miserable time in his office with his boss. And the story he was telling is that, you know, it, it, I really don't enjoy my work. I really don't, uh, I'm not having a good time. I'm really stressed. And my boss just doesn't trust and believe me. And I said, how do you say that? He says, oh, well, you know, he made this remark and uh, I've, I've seen him make this remark over and over in, in, in meetings and in front of people. And, you know, so he kept having this negative experiences with his boss. So it's, it's unknown to him. He's swimming in the story, right? He's swimming in that story and there's a hole in my bucket. There's a hole in my bucket, but it's like this and it's like that. So we, we uh, I had another client all these stories are coming up in my head right now. This was really interesting. This was many years ago, uh, back in the time when I was having clients at my house in that room uh, back there. And, and this lady had come, this older lady, and she had come with her niece. And uh, she came and sat there. And I said, you know, uh, I understand you have lower back pain. And she said, yes. And, you know, she was describing all the symptoms. And she was saying how she feels like, her lower back is on fire all the time. Like there's so much heat that she has to keep shifting. I think I've shared this story before once that she had, she had to keep shifting, you know, uh, her, her sitting position because she felt this fire in her, in her lower back, right? And so we started talking. I said, what have you tried so far? And she said, oh, you know, I went the, to the, when I went to the doctor, uh, he says, my situation is pretty unique and it's nothing like he had seen before. And uh, then I went to this doctor and this doctor and I went to the U.S. and I went this and, you know, I've been everywhere and no one can fix this issue for me. She had created a story and she kept talking about how her situation is very unique. It's not solvable. You can't get around it. It was her fixed 
truth, right? And once your subconscious is, you know, uh, has been convinced that this is the truth, you can try all the things out there. Nothing's going to work for you. And she said, oh, you know, I've been to the best doctors and I've tried this and I've tried this and I've tried this medicine. I've tried that medicine. I've tried that treatment. And I knew, you know, so as we explored together, she was not open to any conversation about, you know, any stress in her life. Uh, she had a great life. She said, she said, oh, you know, apart from this pain, everything is wonderful. So she had created a story about how unique her problem is. Like it's like this one in a world kind of problem that nobody can solve. And she was unhappy about that part of her life, but she was, you know, happily swimming in that pain pool and unwilling to see it any differently. So there are some people who are just stuck there. And, and, and who refuse to see it. And, you know, you can't really do uh, anything about it because they're, they're just so deep into their story that, uh, and, and subconsciously there was a story why she didn't want to get out of her pain. Uh, I told you earlier why we do this is we have all these experiences and then we want to use that as an excuse for escaping responsibility, some consequence, some situation that we fear will be worse than this pain. And so we swim and we swim and we swim. And the story was that her whole family, they were very rich people and they had a big family and everyone was fighting about property, but she was the only aunt that had this problem so everybody loved her and everybody wanted to take care of her and if she got out of her pain she would be just another family member and maybe there would be all this fighting around her and she would have to lose the affection of all these people of course she didn't tell me that but i know that from experience right so uh, you fear that if i'm better then they'll leave they won't give me all this attention. They won't shower me. They won't be kind to me. They won't be loving to me. And so you stay in your pool because you want to escape the responsibility of what will happen. You have a fear about what's going to happen if you step out of this pain pool. But I know this pain. I'm familiar with it. So I might as well just keep swimming in this pool. Okay. So that's, that's, that's your truth, right? And we create these truths in every area of our lives. I remember when I was traveling, um, you know, by United Airlines and I had a really crappy experience. I said, United is a crappy airline, right? And that became my story. And think of how many ways we do this in little, 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 little areas of our lives. This teacher is really mean and, and she's like this and like this. No mom, it's not just me. Like all the kids, Think like this. And so we build evidence and we build, we garner proof, right? For, for supporting our stories. But the thing is, is that story helping you because you're stuck with this teacher and having that story, you know, will only make it worse. So are you willing to uh, let go of that story and, and have a different experience? Most people, you know, it's not easy, right? So, it could be a little story that's keeping you stuck. It could be a big story that's keeping you stuck. But you've got to, you know, you've got to understand you are not your story. You had an experience. You have a story. Like I have this paper in my hand. You have a story and you can let it go because that story isn't you. So what do I mean by your truth and the absolute truth? Your truth is based on your experiences. I love this movie. I hated this movie. What's the truth? <laughs> it's your truth, right? It's based on your perspective. And your truth may be filled with facts, right? From experiences that you had. I did have this experience. This did happen. She did say this. The boss did criticize me. 
and there's all kinds of truths that you have you've had haven't you noticed people around you they'll you know friends colleagues they'll say oh this person is really weird this person's always like this and you've never had that experience or someone else has never had that experience so if that's your truth right you've had an experience you created a belief system and you told a story to yourself and then you you know more more similar stuff happened the absolute truth is unchangeable right so for example going to the silly uh, united story so I, I had sworn i used to travel a lot to the us i still do and i said never again united states the united first of all you know it's it's really uh, you know the knee space is so bad i don't take it but it's not for that reason that i don't take it uh, but you know it, it was a shift here because i remember uh, once we did this family outing uh, to the US and the whole family went and I was so happy because we took the Emirates and, but for the local domestic flights going from this state to this state we had to use United and I swear to God I had a really smooth easy experience so did my truth shift yeah it did right but absolute truths are truths that are unchanging right if you throw the, the paper up, it's going to fall down. There's no changing that, right? The sun is going to come out, whether you see it or not. That's an absolute truth. So you need to recognize that, yes, it is your truth, but is it the absolute truth, right? So you need to question that. And then here are like five steps that I'm going to share with you uh, that can help you kind of move out or at least, um, you know, not be so fixed about the story that you're telling. So first of all, how do I know? How do I know, uh, Shalini, that um, my story is keeping me stuck? Well, you know, uh, you know that it's keeping you stuck because you want to ask yourself, first of all, like, what's making me unhappy? right? What's making me unhappy? What area of your life right now is making you unhappy? Right? What is that area? Of your life? Is it health? Is it, um, is it money? Is it a relationship? Is it a relationship in the office? Is it a relationship with your spouse? what is the area in which you are feeling unhappy right now? And if you're here, if you're listening, you know, you can give a, give a thought to it. If you're on the replay, you can pause, right, as you go along these steps. And so what is my story? What is my story? Now, you want to listen to what are the reasons that your mind is coming up with why this area of your life is not working. And you really need to listen to it uh, intently and with awareness right listen to what are you saying to yourself about why this is not working and usually there'll be a lot of uh, I never I always right uh, I should things like that and I wrote this somewhere here you know i i can i can i can't i always i never i can only i'm just wired for blah 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 and no matter what i do blah 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 in 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 the area of health in the area some somebody some of my you know clients would say i can't manage money that was their story they've had experiences but they've goofed up right and they they have this belief system I don't handle money well. And now they have a story about why they don't make more money or why they never have enough money. And that's the story. So what is your story and, and, and what, are, what are the things you find yourself saying, right? So you want to really reflect on that. Reflect and question. Reflect on, is this the absolute truth? For example, if you are blaming your spouse 
he is always like this she is always like this and and and, and so on and so forth are there some random examples where he's not been like that where she's not been like that where the boss has trusted you where you know finding those uh like those leaks right where your truth is not the absolute truth like yeah he was helpful uh then or yes i did have a good time with my boss you know on that occasion and on that occasion and he really trusted me with that thing right so you want to question the firmly grounded story and the belief and and just question it and you know also question like what is it costing me what is it costing me what is it costing my relationship what is it costing me in my health what is it costing um you know in my peace what is it costing me to keep swimming in this story is it helping me is it supporting me is it nurturing me or is it keeping me stuck even though that's my truth i've had these experiences i've had this uh happen over and over again how is this experience this pattern this behavior this this chronic illness that i've had over and over and over like what is it costing me so once you begin to question and reflect most people don't reflect because it's their absolute truth they think it's their absolute truth and yeah this is the way it is i can never get out of this pain because you know my father has my brother mother has it my it's in my history and i have this unique thing and i'm stuck with it the truth is look for others who've had similar experiences for the health for the relationship whether something you know that that uh, that they've been able to conquer that that they felt wasn't conquerable right there are people who have overcome all kinds of odds we we have so many inspiring stories all around us i never thought in my life that i could heal my illness myself from chronic pain when all the doctors in, you know here in bangkok the bamrung rag the samiti way wherever i was showing myself to they couldn't figure it out so my story back then was i'm stuck if all these doctors can't help me that means i'm stuck and i just like you know got used to being with my pain and being miserable and being a very unhappy uh, person to be around and that i kept swimming in that story until i was open to a, a seminar and they said you're creating everything from your thoughts and i was open to it cuz my kids were small at the time and i desperately wanted to be a regular mom to my kids so no matter how fixed your situation looks be open don't dismiss anything okay as way out there as it may seem who would have thought that just tapping on different acupuncture points just like this and saying some uh, you know words could heal my chronic pain it seems weird it seems unbelievable but that's what happened so don't dismiss anything okay and then reflect on what do i really want what do i want here like what do i want okay my relationship with my my husband or my spouse or my kids sucks right now or i have this really unhappy relationship with my boss or my health really suffers right now and i feel stuck and but what do i really want for myself in this area come back to what do you want like henry wanted to fill his bucket with water right that's what he wanted but he kept pointing on the problem what do i do and this is too long and this is too short and this is not it's too dull come back to what do i want what's my intention in this specific area that i'm feeling pain what do i really want to see happen in this area okay come back to that and then align your intention what you want with your story 
don't tell the same story. Don't keep saying, this is the way it is. This is the way it is. I'll tell you, you know, uh, I can tell you that this has happened and I have these experiences and this is the way it is, Shalini. This is the way it is and there is no way out of here. So bring yourself back to what do I really want to happen here? Instead of swimming in that, that pool, right? That pain pool. What do I really want? I want a better relationship. I would love to have more money. I would love to have a better relationship with my boss. Wouldn't it be nice if I could have this and this and this and if I got to travel and, and, and all the things that you want in different areas of your life. So have that intention and then how can you align? This is your intention and this is where you are right now, right? In school, you, you know, you have to line up, <laughs> line up with that intention by questioning that pain story, by finding ways to get closer to how can I have a better relationship? What can I do? And I, you know, I use like different um, little, you know, uh, softeners, <laughs> fabric softeners in a washing machine. I'm, I'm, that's what's coming to my mind right now. But use words, you know, ex examples, experiences to soften that stand, that hardcore stand. I will not get better. I'm stuck here to something that that kind of like, you know, uh, softens that stance. And here's, here are some like basic um, things, um, sentences that you can say, right? You can say, change is natural. Isn't that true? Like, is there anything that's gonna be same tomorrow about every part of your day? change is natural like the seasons are changing everyone's changing my kids are changing i'm changing my life is constantly changing so this can change too right everything is evolving nothing is staying the same so these are just uh you know information feeds to soften that that hardcore stand that you've taken about your story Nothing is permanent and this doesn't have to be a permanent thing. This uncomfortable relationship, this, 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 uh, uh, this health, this illness, this body weight, this body image that I'm so ashamed of right now, it doesn't have to be a permanent thing because everything is changing and evolving and there is always a way. You know that saying that if you look for evidence, you'll find it? Well, look for a way. Be open to another way that is out there and i promise you when you look for the way and keep looking at what's out there what's out there that i still don't know that is possible for me where there is a will there is a way there is always a way i would never have come across emotional freedom techniques if i didn't soften if i didn't say yes to going to that self-awareness seminar, if I didn't, uh, you know, have my fixed views and think the host was um, just talking crap and how is this stupid technique going to get me out of my chronic pain for months, right? There is always a way. It's just, you need to stop saying, there's a hole in my bucket, there's a hole in my bucket, there's a hole in my bucket, <laughs> okay? Adopt a different view. And as I was saying, like, Tell yourself there are others who are in similar challenges, maybe having worse challenges that have overcome unbelievable amounts of what looks like what looked like impossible situations. So my story can change too. Okay, so my situation can change too. That is not the absolute truth. It's just been my truth. And yes, I'm not making it up. And yes, I'm not, you know, uh, you know, I'm not doing this purposely. But now I understand that just telling my story like it is keeps me stuck. 
and I need a different story. I need a more empowering story. I need a more supportive story. I need a more nurturing story. I need a story that helps me get to the aligned place. I need a story that helps me slowly but surely move towards my intention for this area of my life, uh, whether it's health, you know, all the different things that you want. How can I begin to release uh, those negative, hardcore experiences? Because yes, they are your truth, but they are not the absolute truth. Okay, because people we may have gone through the similar experiences and come out with completely different results. So that is basically, you know, uh, what I wanted to share and these were the tips. And so what I want to ask you is, what are you going to do? Like, what is your story right now? What is the story about why you're stuck and which area you're stuck? And I want to put this challenge out to you, right? To have a think and say, Hmm, what have I been telling myself about this situation? What have I been afraid of? What have I, you know, firmly planted as this is the truth, but it's really paining me. It's really hurting me. It's really uncomfortable. I really don't want to be here. So how can I begin to shift that story? How can I begin to change what I've been telling myself? And what are the parts of the story that I've been telling myself that I need to like get rid of and what new stuff, you know, you imagine if you were the director of your movie, right? And you are editing your story. I have a friend who is a movie director and she's always talking about how much they have to edit, right? The, the editing is a big part of uh, creating the final story. Um, and so what parts do you need to edit? Because you are in charge of that story. It's not out there. It's all in your head. So what parts of your story that you need to edit so that you like the final product, so that you like what starts happening, you like the results that you start getting, so that you like, uh, so that you start enjoying and really benefiting from your story. So thank you so much for joining and I hope you got um, something out of it and I'm still you know, gonna challenge you uh, and, and ask you to go and have a think and, and come back. And uh, you know, uh, if, you, if you're brave enough, come share the story of what was going on and what, what came up for you and how you were able to shift it. So thank you very much for joining. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again next week, next Thursday. Um, this Thursday, this coming Thursday, I'm thinking about not doing the regular storytelling, but doing some tapping. So I'm going to be thinking about, you know, what, what we can do uh, some tapping around. And if you feel like you have certain questions, certain things that you would like uh, help with, please comment. Please let me know. Please email me. I'm going to put my link. Uh, I'm going to put my email address up there so that I can, you know, have ideas about what I can do in the next week. It's going to be a live tapping because I thought, you know, enough stories. Let's do some tapping this time. So if you have physical pain or you have some emotional pain or you have something that you need support with, please send in those questions and I'm going to create the next Facebook live around that. Uh, so, and I, and, and I thank you in advance for playing along with me and I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next week and until then, change that story. Okay, bye guys. Thank you for joining, bye-bye.